If you come on here and you make a statement, you better be prepared to back it up with evidence. I'm going to do the best that I can to look at the evidence and see if there's enough information there to prove it to be a fact. With this day and age, with so much bad information going out, even on the major networks, it's not what I stand for in life. I stand for the truth and doing whatever it takes to prove what somebody's saying is true. I have no issues with telling anybody that I don't have enough information to prove what they say is correct. And that's what I am about as a person. So as I started looking through Richard's laptop and reading through his phone conversations with some prominent people, I started seeing names that stood out to me. As I researched who they all were, I knew there was more to the story. Part of my work here is to investigate and confirm evidence that is given to me on statements made by guests on my platform. I seek the truth and work diligently to provide it. Now when you have a story that's backed by factual information, you don't just have any story, you have a true story. Now this is the evidence of WFN. One of the key players with the WWE connection is Rick Bassman, the person who brought us James Helwig, otherwise known as the Ultimate Warrior, along with John Cena, among others. And here we have Tony Morris, a trainer to the stars, which the movie Magic Mike was inspired by. And finally, one of the biggest clients of WFN. And no, not the real Jesse Ventura, but somebody using his identity to purchase over $40,000 worth of steroids from Richard Rodriguez. And were they given to other WWE stars? Now, there are so many questions that I need to ask Richard. We're here again with Richard Rodriguez, former owner of WFN in Iron Addicts Gym, Miami. He's calling us directly from the Brooklyn State Prison in New York. Now, Richard, first and foremost, before we get into anything else, the accuracy of some of your statements have recently come into question. Can you please explain to everyone how important it is to you and your family's life to be as accurate as possible in the statements you make and how giving out inaccurate information can seriously affect your life? Well, I think I should answer that by saying this. One needs to understand that anyone's statements, especially that of someone claiming that public figures or athletes were once clients or that they engage in communications with them, would always come into question regardless of who it is. The fact that those who know me would well easily vouch and say that I've always been a person who's approached everything in my life by being conservative and conscientious of what my reactions to, to my actions would ever be. Given the fact that false statements were presented to federal prosecutors and judge, in my case, by informants and people that have not been indicted, being a person that lies would only be following the same path as those individuals. Hence why that's never been my character, nor will it ever be. 
All right, so Richard, just you, call it from a federal prison. I would like you to discuss how this all started. You know, obviously, I have access to your text messages, your emails, your conversations with well-known individuals. I noticed that some of them brought you clients, and it appears that's how you were introduced to dealing with athletes, celebrities, and prominent figures. So the first question I have for you is, can you discuss how you were introduced to WWE clients and celebrities, and who was your initial contact? Yeah, my initial exposure with WWE ref wrestlers, both active and inactive, was when I was formally introduced to Mark and Chris Bell via Stan Efferton. Um, given that they had a brother who formerly wrestled in WWE, and that you probably um, um, found, found out through your due diligence, it was through them that people like Jesse Burdick, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, Rick Baseman, Daniel Pewter, John Cena, Steve Austin, and many others became eventually advocates and clients of my product. What's crazy is that within a short period of one year of working with them and what initially evolved with just a few critical videos and online endorsements by them, it blew up into hundreds of thousands of dollars in orders and quite an extensive Rolodex of not just wrestlers, but also other A-listers and celebrities. You're looking at the conversations that Richard had with Chris Bell, and from reading them, it appears that Chris was key in the connections Richard made with wrestlers and celebrities. They also discussed the commissions on the clients brought in by each individual. The connections made with the Bell brothers brought in a huge cash flow to WFN. But there's one telling message at the end, which is the last text message in this conversation. The rest of his communications with Chris Bell is on his other device. All right, so let me ask you a question. Um, there seems to be three people from what I've been looking at here that seem to have WWE connections, and they've all placed orders with WFN. So first, can you discuss your relationship with Baseman, please? Yeah, Rick Baseman reached out to me initially for protocols, not for just himself, but also a close colleague whom we know as an ultimate warrior. Again, he was also first introduced to me by um, Chris Bell. But it was not until we expanded our marketing relationships with a colleague of his named Rick Dreesen that he quickly expanded his order frequencies. It was through these relationships with him and Rick Dreesen that other wrestlers like John Cena and Steve Austin eventually became clients. Also, if you recall my previous conversation with you, uh, Rick Dreesen was also the individual that introduced me to the Hall of Fame bodybuilder Bill Grant that eventually introduced me to individuals that um, worked with Brock Lesnar that also eventually became a client as well. This is an order confirmation of one of his orders, along with the payment authorization receipt confirming his identity. So you also mentioned Chris Cavallini. Um, if I remember correctly, he was arrested for the distribution of anabolic steroids in the past. And it looks from what I'm looking at here that he placed 19 orders with WFN. Can you elaborate on that, please? Um, Chris Cavallini was one of those many um, elite athletes that contacted my company to become a client, much like someone else that we'll discuss later named Tony Morris. It was when I started to evaluate his orders and frequencies that I started to understand his exclusive association with wrestlers like Seamus and Jinder Mahal, and how they were possibly utilizing some of our products, which is yet to be confirmed um, since we're still doing our due diligence. Okay, so you see that he had work with these wrestlers in the past? Correct. Okay. And Jesse Burdick now, I see that he's also a trainer, and from looking at all the orders, he's one of your top five biggest clients, and it looks like he's spent over $40,000 with your company. Can you talk about your relationship with him and answer the question that probably I have and probably everyone else, is why would he place so many orders with WFM? Jesse Burdick, um, again, came through Chris and Mark Bell, they have a strong alliance with one another. Um, it was through uh, my various interactions with him and through Chris that it, Let's call it from a federal prison. that it came to the realization of his depth and relationship with wrestlers like John Cena, which were also users of my products. But my main concern of the sizes of his orders of various addresses and aliases where large quantities were shipped. That was towards when I started to inquire more about who were the users since it was blatantly obvious it was not just for him. After further questionings of people like him, 
and Rick Drazen and Chris Bell, that's when I started to understand other possible wrestlers that have been referred to my site. Once we were clear on the importance of many of those wrestlers and the concerns of their protocols and usage of my products, that's when I was eventually allowed to exchange messages and phone conversations with many of them. My focus with all the WWE athletes that came to Verdict, that came to Chris, that came to Rick, that came to Chris Bell, you know, was always to ensure proper utilization of the products and preventing the possible ban from WWE if they ever failed a drug test, given that all of them usually underwent some form of testing periodically. And as a matter of fact, even up until, up until the point where WFM was shut down in February of 2017, I was still interacting with many of them to continue our expansion initiatives by assuring that we minimize the liability for each other, but closely monitor the proper utilization of the various cycles that many of these people were on, including themselves. All right. So um, another person... The, and I was going to go into that a little bit more, but I know the time is limited, uh, and there's a few things I want to get to here. Uh, Daniel Pewter, I see from all the files that I see here on uh, your laptop, he used to work for you, and I know that he was also in the WWE. I believe he uh, won a Tough Man uh, a few years tough back. Man, yeah, WWE tough enough. Yeah, right. tough enough. Uh, so my question is, can you can you tell me a little bit more about what he did for you? part-time marketing sales strategies that I brought on board, not just to uh, more effectively manage the company's growing uh, WWE list of clients, but also to market um, other um, industries like the UFC and public figures he worked with. He was the one that brought people like Dan Bazarian and others that evolved into entries into other markets like the porn industry and the development of more innovative products. With his background and experience having won WWE Tough Enough and also being a good UFC fighter, it was a very easy decision to bring him on board and being an advocate for my company. That's not to leave out that he was also generously rewarded for his efforts too. All right, so he was being paid, he was getting commissions on the people he brought in, and he's also bringing high-profile people in, like Dan Blazerian and other MMA fighters, Correct. you said? Correct. Okay, uh, which we'll get into also at a later time. Now, if you look at the contract details proposed by Daniel Pewter, he proposed ways to recruit celebrities and athletes to push new clients. Richard knew what connections he needed in order to make his business strive and chose to only work with those types of people. The model was commission based, so the higher profile people he could find to promote his business, the more sales they can push. This is a contract proposed to Rick Drayson. It included a monthly salary along with unlimited orders, not just for himself, but for colleagues as well. You mentioned Tony Morris. He's also one of your top clients, and he's a well-known celebrity trainer, uh, and the movie Magic Mike was inspired about his life. Uh, what was your relationship with him? Did he bring in celebrities to you? Yeah, he... Um Tony was an interesting character uh, because, um, you know, being around celebrities constantly, I was never familiarized with his influence, nor did um, someone's popularity excite me. Um, but once we started working more extensively and his order started to increase, he made me aware of his popularity, including people um, in the movie like wrestler uh, Steve Nash and Tatum Tatum, who he made orders for in preparation for the film and continued use throughout their life. Um, it was through him also that we later expanded into working with other high-profile celebrity trainers that work with folks like Josh Dunham or Mark Warburg that we discussed in prior videos. Okay, so so basically, uh, he ordered. He basically, you're saying that he ordered products for the people he trained, and a lot of them were celebrity actors. Some you've had direct contact with, and some you didn't. But Correct. that's why you and feel. Some of them were also wrestlers too, so that's okay. how it ties in also to WWE uh, inactive roster. Okay. Um, now. We got to get to this Roman Reigns situation because this is something that, you know, people have been beating on my head for the past two weeks on, you know, and big part of it was because I wanted to be accurate. I mean, this his life is on the line. Uh, our reputations are on the line and, and mine is as well. And I don't want to give out inaccurate information if I don't have proper evidence. So let me ask you a question. A lot of people, uh, they think that you made a mistake saying that you thought Luther Reigns <laughs> – was Roman Reigns. First, do you know the difference between the two? Oh, uh, yes, 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 
wrestler, yes. Um, I'm an avid wrestler, um, fanatic, wrestling fanatic. And like I said in my prior statements earlier, let's not jump into conclusions and try to discredit people who've never misled their audience and followers. You know, saying something about Luther Reigns quickly, um, he placed a bunch of orders with you. He used his first name, Matt. It looks like he changed his last name on some of the orders. And not to go backtrack, a Jesse Burdick, something funny with him, is he placed all his $40,000 order? with the name Jesse Ventura. So all his orders <laughs> yeah. were using the Jesse Ventura. So, you know, I feel bad for Jesse Ventura. So everybody, Jesse Ventura never ordered anything from Richard Rodriguez. Just letting everybody know that when they see this on screen. I'm gonna give an inside look on the process I take in order to confirm orders placed with WFN. The first example which we have gone over in the past is Josh Demel. In his case, it was easy since most of his orders placed were under his real name, along with verified addresses and text messages using a phone number I can verify. The next example is Luther Reigns, which is fitting due to the recent rumors. In this case, you can see here the referral from Chris Bell to Richard Rodriguez through text messages. I was also able to verify the phone number and address information on the orders, even though some were placed under an alias. Lastly, we're going to take a look at Jesse Burdick. This was also a referral from Chris Bell, and even though the orders were placed under the alias Jesse Ventura, I found mentions in both texts and an email from him confirming his identity. This information is key in order for me to verify the identity of those who placed an order with WFN. In the cases of others, orders that were placed with an alias, along with being shipped to an address which are not registered to their name, makes cross-referencing them extremely difficult. This is why the text communications between Richard and any name mentioned to placed orders is key in identifying them. College from a federal prison. You know, my job as a journalist, reporter, and filmmaker is to confirm and verify the statements that you make through the evidence that I've received. Up until this point, each and every person that you have named, I've been given evidence for. However, some of the evidence that I need in order to be 110% accurate with my findings, I'm still waiting for. I understand this is an ongoing case, and I know that there is some evidence including some devices you have, iPhones, iPads, and computers that have not been released in the court proceedings yet. But I may need them in order to verify some information. So without that key information, there are two cases that I have to say that I can't verify at this time. One being Mark Wahlberg, and the second being Roman Reigns. And when I say this, if you go back to the O.J. Simpson trial, back in the early 90s. If you remember what Johnny Cochran said, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. Well, those rules apply to me as well. And you have to prove somebody beyond the reasonable doubt in order to say what you have is 110% accurate. You know, going to Mark Wahlberg, um, I understand he ordered uh, through a doctor and if I had the communication information that you had with him, I would be able to verify it as I have done in the other cases. As far as Roman Reigns, since his orders were placed under an alias, as the case were with a lot of people, it's impossible for me to cross-reference his orders without seeing the communication that you had with him through text messages. And I understand that those devices are still with DEA. So you understand what I'm saying, right? Yes, that's the reason why the short answer to your uh, to your uh, to your concern is that yes, um, you, uh, my integrity is just as important and is on the line than that the one that's delivering the message, which would be you. You have been in constant communication with my attorney on the ETA of the release of those additional communication devices. And yes, that can take which is true. So not just Roman and Mark but others that we would eventually be discussing in this video in the future ones that, are, that will be released. But I just want to preface by saying that my focus is day one is to present, just as you, just like you, irrefutable evidence that these people without an you know, alternative but to come clean. 
Nothing has ever deviated me from ever changing that strategy at all. So you're saying, um, obviously, I've been speaking to your lawyer, and when these devices are released, uh, they will be in my possession, correct? 